What up everybody? My name is David Andrew Berry and this is David Andrew's media YouTube page. Welcome to the official first video. I have some exclusive content for you. Got to interview Felicia George from Canada. She is, just in case you don't know, Canada's women's bobsleigh and athletics uh, athlete. Uh, she participated in the 100 meter hurdles for Canada, also the 100, uh, da the 100 meter dash and the 200 meter dash. She also participated in women's bobsleigh. Let me know what you think. Deuce, deuce, peeps. Jose, tell me about your college career, comparison to this. No, you were Oh, wait, no, yeah, no, but I, I need to finish. Okay. <laughs> so, what I was saying was, I feel like when I was um, in high school, I was a very soft athlete. Um, and it's funny because even like going into um, university, my coach would say, like, I'm soft like porridge. He's Jamaican. <laughs> and, like, I literally remember my first hurdle workout, I cried because, like, I couldn't get what we were trying to do. Like to that, like that's how like mentally weak I was, and I feel like those college years were like essential for making me a more mentally strong athlete, a more aggressive and competitive athlete, and kind of like teaching me the work ethic that I had, um, and kind of like yeah, seeing myself progress through that. So I think while I might not have been like the college superstar, there was like really important things that I learned within those four years. Mm. That like, I sold and like a lot of people saw me like, I left college and I had a breakout year. So my first year out of school, um, I made my first interna international team. I dropped my PB from 1339 to 1273. I made world championship finals. And I think a lot of people just saw that and was like, oh, like, you know, it just happened so easy for you, but I'm like, this has been like a work in progress for like years. I'm like, you know what I mean? Oh, you gotta so, say something slick. Like so, but yeah, so <laughs> I think, so in that sense, it was different. I feel like I'm just a different athlete because of those years. Yeah. In a positive way. Um, and then, I mean, it's funny because I feel like in college, it's the focus was obviously on academics and athletics. Yeah. So my first few years, it was really nice. I was excited to not have do anything but focus on track. I, I really want to do that, and that's the way I invested the first few years. And now that I've been out for a while, I'm like kind of going back to like now I want to like get back into like just balance balance myself with other things. Yeah. So I think I think at that point in my life, I really wanted to be give 100% of my energy to track, and it wor and it worked for me at that time. And um, past few years, um, being 100% only only track hasn't worked so then now it's kind of like just bringing other things into this kind of like you know open my mind for this stuff how do you handle criticism uh, <laughs> <laughs> um i think for the most part well one i try to i try to just avoid things in general like that um so like for example um going into the Winter Olympics, I like totally shut down all of my social media, like deleted Instagram, deleted Twitter from my phone, and it was like, I think it's better to not even open myself up to seeing anything negative or being uh, negatively influenced by anything and letting that change my energy. So I'm like, I'm not even gonna expose myself to that right now, yeah. type of thing. Um, so I think sometimes you just need to cut things out to not even let yourself see it. At certain times, you know, when the, it's necessary. Um, but I don't know. I feel like I try to always take the positive in whatever somebody's trying to say to me, if that's, you know. And I feel like I take criticism well from people that I know care about me and love me. So I think it's positive, and I think if I have a good relationship with someone, um, I'm open to <laughs> criticism. I think. It's harder when it's like someone yeah. like a random because their voices are louder than yeah. the ones that are actually next yeah. to you. But um, I but then I also feel like I try to like if it's not somebody who I feel like is in my corner, um, you know I'll listen to what they're saying, but I'll also just like if I feel like it's not a value, I just let it go. Do you have anyone that you look up to or identify with? Um. 
I feel like <laughs> I'm I'm inspired by anybody who does things that they feel passionate about and kind of like takes a route that is um, not traditionally traveled. Yeah. So I feel like I, I'm inspired by anybody who like goes against the grain and, and like doesn't follow status quo. Um, I think that takes a lot of courage to do that and to truly be yourself. And so I think I'm not a big like celebrity person and like so it's hard for me to say like oh there's this person that I necessarily look at but I feel like when I meet people and they tell me their story or whatever and they be like oh I do this and this is how I you know overcame this like that's the type of stuff I find inspiring just like regular people on a daily basis type of thing mm -hmm. um, but yeah nobody that I can necessarily point out that I'm like okay. I mean there's been like track athletes yeah um, especially like in the hurdles and stuff that I'm like I've admired but, yeah. You probably have a plethora of different people that you just like look up to then. In terms of like for track? No, not not in track, like just in general. Like if you see somebody's like enthusiasm and their passion for their work, you can right. just be like, oh, yeah. I want a little bit of what you got. Because right. that's, you got some fire right now. Right, you know yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, let's do, you have any mentors? No, nobody that I could think of. <laughs> but you know what? I don't know. I, maybe that's not fair to say. Because sh maybe I'm not thinking of... Like, I have people who, s who speak into my life. Um, but maybe... I, and it's so like I say, like, for example, my university coach, I'm still in contact with. Yeah. Um, if I need something, I know I can contact him. Like, I feel like all of my coaches have had such a profound influence on my life. And I have good relations with all my coaches that I have had that I can still contact them. And if I need advice on something, they will help me with that. Um, so I guess maybe I have a lot. I do have a lot of people that I feel like guide me. Like obviously my my like my dad and my aunts. And, um, but like no, I can't think of anybody like let's say I have like a, I don't know someone who I'm just like that's my mentor. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, yeah. Last question back to that full circle. Um, who are you? We'll go back. Yeah. <laughs> you still feel the same way about the athlete? Thing? I don't know. I, I think I think it's hard to say that I'm being an athlete is part of my identity. Yeah. And I feel like it always will be a part of my identity. But it's not my whole identity. Yeah. Um, so but I think like it's taken up so much of my life and I've invested so much time into it that it's like a true part of who I am um, and I feel like more so from the sense of like what I've gained as a person like how I've become a change because of the challenges of what being an athlete means so I will still say I'm still with the same thing an athlete <laughs> okay. alright sweet that was impeccable timing because I got like five <laughs> seconds and it's heating up right now and it's alright y'all check out David Andrews media Cool. I'm pocket in and out of doubles. You can't name another nigga with the work. Empty out the brooker, all you gonna hear is the sun. I don't wanna see another face up on a white tee. Oh, I think they like me. Tell the best to like me. Never give a dollar to no nigga, no.